Let's talk a little bit about inheritance in React. What you see right here is a class that's inheriting from another class, the actual React component class. And that's how we actually render out our component. Now you might be tempted to write some code in your own class and then inherit from that. In other words, do something like class my new wrapper extends parent wrapper and do that. Now it probably will work, but it's definitely not recommended because of a lot of reasons. One of them being that you start to make your code a lot more confusing this way. Keeping it as a component will make things a lot easier for you in the long run. Um, so what we're gonna do instead is I'm gonna show you how to do what React calls composition. So that is being able to reuse this code. A lot of this is coming straight from the docs, but it's still important to see how it works and just understand a little bit better on all this. Now, first and foremost, this component is not very good. We can actually change it into something uh, more like a function, right? So we can actually use a function and just say, let's call it parent wrapper still and have it pass in props by default and return the exact same thing, All right? So I'm gonna comment out this other class, save that, and what do you know? Still coming through, All right? So it's the exact same thing. I still have that parent wrapper in the app, that's it. So this function is, it's pretty static, right? So if I wanna add the abilities that this component has, I could do that. Uh, but what I wanna do instead is I wanna make this my alert box, right? So alert boxes you'll see fairly often. So I'm just gonna call this the alert box and I'll have that as my default export, save it. I did not save anything or change anything in app.js. So I refresh in here, it's still working. Now you might be familiar with this, maybe not, um, but when you do export default in the latest version of JavaScript ES6, it will export that whatever. You can only have one default export per thing. So you don't actually have to name it the exact same thing. But this alert box, what we want it to do is I actually want this to have some sort of class that's related to the props that are being passed to this. In other words, I wanna have a div class in here and I wanna actually have my content. So I wanna fill this in with something. We'll see what that is in a second. Uh, but then I wanna use the props to actually handle whatever this class name would be, right? So if I had this, it would be, in my case, I'm gonna use just the standard bootstrap, that front end library. Um, so alert and let's say alert and dash, right? And then I'll just add props dot whatever prop that I wanna give it. So I'll just call it alert type. Uh, let's use camo case. Okay, so this will allow me to actually put in something inside of this alert. Now, if I save it as it is now, um, it says fill in with something, right? Well, I actually do wanna fill it in with something. So let's add uh, the ability to change this by using child elements that you can use in whether it's a function or a class something you may have not seen before. But like, how do I change what this is based off of something else? In other words, how do I make, you know, welcome here dialogue do roughly the same thing, but use that alert box. So I'm gonna go ahead and return. I wanna actually use the alert box itself. So alert box and then close off alert box. So this welcome here dialogue is now what the app is gonna be called. Again, not changing the imports at all, not yet at least. So we've got our welcome here dialogue, refresh, it's still rendering the same thing, right? And it actually with standard JS and, and the syntax linter that I have, um, it does change it to this. So I actually wanna put some content in this and I'll just say some new content and we'll close off that alert box and you know what, let's give it an H1 in here. And while we're at it, we have our alert box and we have some props here. Let's go ahead and add an alert type. So alert type being success. 
So we save that. I refresh in here and it still says fill this in with something. But now if I inspect the element and take a look, I see that it says alert-success, right? And of course that's coming from the prop itself. So props is working. Now again, you could do this same thing with the component itself, right? It's, it's actually not a whole lot different here. You would just be calling the component like that and then using props. And let's actually just do it. So I'll just go in here and say, const alert type equals to this dot props, All right? So now parent wrapper and alert box are doing roughly the same thing. So let's, let's just keep that going. We'll, we'll, we'll actually show you both things. I mean, it's not a whole lot different anyway, but um, how do we actually change the content that's coming through here based off of the content that we have as considered contained in this element? Um, well, this is a child component of the property. So all I do here is props.child or children rather. Um, and again, oh, sorry, this is in the wrapper. So we would say const uh, children equals to this.props. You could do something like that, or really it'd be this.props.children. That's more likely how you would write it. And then here it is just simply props.children because that's the method that's gonna be passed by default to functions that are used in this manner as a component. Okay, so there we go. That actually renders it out. And now we have a alert box that I can use in other places, right? So I can actually import this alert box somewhere else, right? So if I wanted to, I would come in here and want to import the alert box. So that's where I just do export alert box, right? So I have the welcome here dialog is coming in by default. So let's let's make sure our imports are looking good. So welcome here dialog. I'm gonna comment out this parent wrapper. We don't need that anymore. Um, again, you can test that out if you wanted. But now let's go ahead and try our alert box out in app.js, just like we did before. And this time it's uh, we called it alert type. I'll just say danger and I think this is working, dot, dot, dot. Close off that alert box, we save it, and we come back in here, I think this is working, dot, dot, dot. I go and inspect this element here, and what do we've got? We've got danger, success, and what do you know? It's actually rendering it the way you might think. And this is how you can reuse that, right? So that actual piece, I can now reuse anywhere. And of course, with all this, I can still use a class component you know, something like this and have it rendered in here as well. So let's just say sub item and, you know, do this exact same thing, right? Like, like that's, that's not, probably not, that's shocking here. But that's where you would actually move these things out and, and have it where if you have functions or methods that you wanna reuse over and over again, this would be a really good way to do that. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be done exactly like this, it's kind of up to you. But the idea here is that you have these components that you build and you can share them across other ones, right? So this these functions here can be shared against other code and that's just how you do it. You wanna make sure you're exporting it much like I have here. You can only do one default export like I have and with multiple exports, you can do it, I mean, much like I just did. So sub item, uh, alert box, sub item, just like that, and then that way we could import those things elsewhere, like that. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe to get everything. I'm gonna be covering a lot more stuff on React here and in the future. I think this piece is pretty cool and it'll help speed up, you know, not rewriting everything that you need to do over and over again in your projects. And also the main thing here is understanding that we shouldn't be doing our own custom class components or overriding that custom class component. Instead, just go ahead and make individual functions that do things like this. And of course, these could be their own components themselves, but this is a really nice, clean and easy way to do that um, for a variety of, of things. And that's what I would recommend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.